So on this question, we're going to be evaluating some limits at infinity and then at negative infinity. And we're really just supposed to decide, this question says, is, are they plus infinity or minus infinity? So it's either one or the other. Let's, uh, let's look at, we'll do this part A first, just because it appears above part B. So this function is a cubic. So let's write down the function itself. I like to put the uh, higher, po higher power term in front. So it's negative 34x cubed minus 21x squared. What is important here, because we're approaching infinity, we want to think about the long run behavior. So when x is really big, like a million, billion, trillion, and bigger, what uh, ends up being important is only the higher power term becomes important. And this, because it's a lower power, is less important. So what we have is a cubic, and there's two ways a cubic looks. It either looks like this or like this. Our coefficient in front is negative 34, which means our cubic looks like this right here. It'll be mostly decreasing. There can be, of course, some increase in the kind of middle area. And this is what the graph will look like. What happens when x approaches infinity, that means goes to the right, if you keep going to the right, to the right, to the right, what's happening to the y value? The y value is going down and down and down. There is no lower limit. So we can write this as x approaches infinity, meaning as we go to the right, y, or f of x, approaches negative infinity. You can see that happen just by looking at this term. And if we plug in positive infinity for x, when we cube it, we get positive infinity. But we multiply that by a negative number, and that turns it into negative infinity. So there's two different ways to get negative infinity for part a. One thing that would be a little bit more tricky in this question is if one of these was positive and one was negative. So for example, if we had, I'll just switch the color here. If we had a plus instead of a minus, you'd have this one going to negative infinity, this one going to positive infinity. It looks like they might cancel each other out, but that less important still comes into play. And so the x squared term wouldn't matter because the x cubed term is going to have a much stronger effect. OK, so now we're going to approach negative infinity. Now there's one tricky thing. As x approaches negative infinity, what that really means is it's going to the left towards negative infinity. But the arrow, the way you write the arrow, makes you think it's going to the right. It's not going to the right. Remember, negative infinity means to the left. What happens to the y value? Our f of x value is going to uh, approach positive infinity. You can also see that happen just by looking at the first term here. Now, we have negative infinity cubed. That's three negatives multiplied together, so it's still negative. So this negative infinity cubed is still negative infinity times another negative gives you positive infinity. So you can do it either way, but you're going to get positive infinity.